and good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Um, good to have you here joining us here um, for this uh, Runecast free round bag session. Um, yeah, we've been working with uh, Runecast over a number of months now. Um, it's it's a fairly new product to the market, um, but it's come on leaps and bounds since we've been looking at it. Um, it uh, seems to be a very powerful um, monitoring tool um, that, that fits in uh, quite a number of organisations that we've seen. Um, and the beauty of it is the simplicity in a way. Um, it's, it's very easy to deploy and get up and running and um, the results you get back from it are immediate. So um, yeah, we, we, we think it's definitely a very cool tool. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, we've just got some slides to go through just to give you an idea of what, what the product does and how it works. Um, basically, we're just going to jump into a uh, demo of the product. So we've just got the product running in our environment, um, just in a little lab environment. So it's all um, deliberately not working very well. Um, and then we'll just have a bit of a Q&A. So if anyone's got any questions, just fire them through on the chat um, and they'll get passed on through to me. So without further ado, we'll just uh, jump into the slides. So when it comes to the, the, the knowledge that is available out there for uh, virtualized VMware environments, um, as we all know, the, the, probably the best centralized place for all of the uh, documentation and all the knowledge that required is VMware themselves. So they spend a, a great deal of time uh, collecting knowledge and um, turning this knowledge into um, a number of different things that are available to everyone from their website. So primarily, these three things are the VMware knowledge base. So as any VMware admin will know, this is the place we go when we have quite often, or more often than not, when we run into issues. Um, the knowledge base is, is vast and huge and contains a, a large, large number of articles. Um, you pretty much be sure that when you run into an issue, um, there's probably a pretty good chance there's a KB article uh, around that issue. Um, often the hardest thing is just trying to find it um, due to the, the large number of articles that are there. Um, often it's just trying to find the right one that fits your environment. Um, can take a bit of time and a bit of hit and miss, um, but chances are, unless it's a, um, a day zero issue, um, it's already been documented. Um, another place that I, I use and uh, we, most of the guys use uh, in my company very often is the best practices in the blogs. So there's a number of um, blog sources uh, where some of the top guys in VMware um, write about common issues and, and or, um, best practices in terms of deploying products or configuring or, or troubleshooting. Um, there's a number of best practice articles that are available. Um, again, it's just a, a question of uh, knowing where to look and how to look for these, um, these documents um, is often the hardest part of it. The uh, third part to uh, VMware documentation, um, which is equally as important as the other two, is the security hardening guides. So VMware themselves produce a number of uh, security hardening guides which take you through um, best, well, many different ways of, of securing your environment to adhere with, with the best practice. Um, there are different levels of hardening that you can adhere to, as I'm sure most people know. Um, but at a minimum, uh, there are definitely a number of um, security hardening settings that we should all adhere to uh, in pretty much every environment. So again, it's 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 all there. It's all available on the VMware site. Uh, often the hardest thing is just trying to find the correct information that fits to your environment. So. What are the problems that we often see in, in uh, VMware deployments um, that are out there in the wild? So kind of the problems that we get in the operations are um, 
there's there's we all know there's there's plenty of very smart guys out there looking after the VMware environments that have a huge amount of knowledge, uh, but this knowledge is is quite often just used reactively. So it's pretty much a common thing that um, until we have a problem, um, we don't go and look for it. Uh, we don't uh, proactively go and look for issues that may occur in our environment. It's normally the case that something will break, uh, something stops working, something doesn't work the way it should do, and that's when we actually go and start looking for that issue. And like I said before, that can be going through VMware KB articles, looking up best practice guides, or if it's a, a security-related issue, uh, it's, it's looking through the security hardening guides. Um, security health checks done manually. So um, hopefully most people do do uh, regular security type health checks of their environment. Um, those who do, I'm sure um, this is something that, ha that is um, only done uh, manually. Um, I would hope it's on a regular basis, but that may not be the case. It only be maybe just as and when it's requested. Um, so we may not find that there are security issues uh, until a health check is done manually, um, and that is presuming that that health check is done manually. Uh, best practices are not always used, so like I said before, there are a number of best, practice, best, best practices, a uh, number of documents related to that, um, but it's not always the case that people have, uh, are aware of those or have used those. Um, so quite often, um, yeah, default settings are just used, and the default settings are definitely by no means what are classed as best practices. Um, log files. Um, vCenter and the vSphere hosts and the virtual machines themselves all generate a huge amount of logs. Uh, majority of the time, these just go nowhere. Uh, they sit there in, in files on the hosts uh, or inside Windows um, and are not touched, not looked at. Um, occasionally you may have to go and look through the logs when you run into an issue. Uh, that's when you start having to dig, um, start dig deep into those files. Um, but the majority of the time they, they are just uh, sit there doing nothing. Um, some kind of uh, syslog, something like that, as a central repository for collecting logs. Um, but again, that's that's good, but they're all still not being used. They are just being collected in a central place. Um, good, but, but better than never actually using them, but uh, still they are not uh, commonly used until you actually run into an issue. Uh, another problem, common problem in operations is uh, time lost in troubleshooting. So again, it's it's about the reactive um, side of when we have an issue. Um, what do we do when the issue occurs? How do we troubleshoot it? Where do we go? What do we look at? Do we look at the VMware KB articles? Do we need to go through the best practice guides? Is it a security issue? Um, a lot of a lot of IT people's time is spent troubleshooting, um, and as I'm sure you all know, um, we'd rather be doing other stuff um, rather than just doing troubleshooting all the time. So, what is the solution to this? So, Runecast have uh, basically taken. Um, uh, a combination of these different resources, so VMware KB articles, VMware best practice guides, and the VMware security hardening guides. Um, and they have taken all of this knowledge that is publicly available um, and used their expertise. Um, so there are a number of extremely smart guys that work for Runecast. They have a VCDX, a number of VCAPs, VCPs, um, many other qualifications, I'm sure, um, and they take all of this information and have developed a tool from this that is able to uh, expose any potential issues or best practice violations before they cause major outages. So the whole um, 
main idea of Runecast is that rather than waiting for an issue to happen and, and then capture that issue and have to go through and troubleshoot it, wouldn't it be much better if we knew about potential issues before they happen? So if we can detect any potential issues, uh, flag them, um, look into them, link these, uh, these issues back to KB articles or best practice guides or security hardening guides, um, decide what is the best fit for your environment um, and fix or you know, remedy these issues or potential issues before they actually become a outage. Uh, the last thing we want to do is wait. Uh, we don't want to be the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. We don't want to be sweeping up um, trying to fix um, stuff. Once it's broken, um, we all know that you're in a much better situation if you can prevent those issues from happening. Um, yeah, that's it's it's definitely the way um, the way it should be done. Business benefits of this are, like I said before, saving time, uh, less time troubleshooting. So rather than spending our time fixing issues uh, or doing health checks, uh, we can spend our time doing other stuff like looking at new products or mucking around with cool tech stuff. Um, definitely, that's much. I'd much rather be doing that than, uh, yeah, trying to fix problems as um, is often the case. Minimizing outages. So discovering the issues before they cause the outage. Um, uh, this is just a no-brainer, really. Any any company is always going to prefer um, issues are discovered before um, they cause an outage. So knowing how uh, vitally important the VMware platforms are in in most companies nowadays. Um, to have a major outage on the VMware platform uh, causes a huge amount of heartache in, in the majority of companies. So if we can find a way that we can discover any potential issues before they happen, um, that's good for me. Uh, improving visibility. So using Runecast, what we can do is to uh, point um, the syslogs to the Runecast server. Uh, the Runecast server will um, ingest those and look through them for issues and flag any issues it finds in them. Um, and also we can go through and see those uh, those consolidated logs and look for potential issues if it's something that isn't captured. Increased security. Um, again, like I said before, uh, security should be uh, something that is taken very seriously in the VMware environment. Um, Greencast is going to give you a number of suggestions on how you can increase the security of your environment. Um, it's up to you. You do not have to follow them all, of course. Uh, there may be some instances where you uh, specifically do not uh, or cannot follow a, a security recommendation. Um, so there is a way to kind of ignore certain settings, but uh, it's better to be find out what they are first decide if you want to uh, um, change settings to, to fix any potential security issues uh, rather than run into a security breach and then have to explain uh, posthumously uh, why and how that happened. Minimizing risk. So Runecast is, uh, is all about having continuous compliance. So um, Straight out from the go, once we get the Runecast appliance in and up and running, it's, uh, it's going to do a scan and very, very quickly uh, tell you a number of issues in your environment, which is all well and good. And you may go away and fix the majority of these issues or, or make sure you're happy or um, happy with them. Um, but it's also about continuous compliance because, as we all know, um, it may be all well and good to fix an issue uh, now, um, but quite often there is configuration drift or um, deliberate or undeliberate change or malicious uh, change to environments, uh, which can then re-expose you to an issue which you have previously resolved. So it's, it's about having a product that will continuously uh, scan your environment on a regular basis and um, 
continue to uh, check for any issues and continue to uh, alert you of anything that um, does occur or, or reoccur. And uh, reducing cost. So one of the big things that we can do by uh, preventing these outages is uh, is, is going to save companies money. So by not having uh, outages or issues or um, yeah, any, any, anything major like that, uh, it's going to save a company money. Um, it's going to save time in terms of staff. So as I said before, not spending time fixing issues uh, gives you more time freed up to do other stuff, project work, uh, playing with new toys, whatever you want to do. It's, it's, it's just better. <laughs> I'd much rather be doing that than having to uh, um, fix, uh, continuously look and fix issues and environments. Um, I think that applies to everyone, pretty sure. So that's it for the uh, slides. Like I said, there's not really uh, a huge amount of slides there to go through. Um, what I really want to do is um, just um, show you guys product itself. So unless we've got any questions at this point. Uh, one thing that you mentioned is about with the uh, security recommendations, you mentioned that you don't have to do it. It's just sort of a prompt. When you choose not yeah. to do one, so say it's not suitable for your environment, which is always possible, uh, can you yeah. sort of ignore that KB article? Yes, yes. So as we'll show you in the demo in a minute, uh, every every issue that's flagged either as a KB or a, a best practice or a security hardening recommendation, um, there is an option to set up filters so you can filter um, certain any any uh, issue that is flagged, you can set a filter on it and basically just ignore that issue. So if there's an issue, say as a, an example for security hardening you, with the promiscuous mode um, setting, uh, this is going to recommend that you do not allow that, but there may be um, circumstances where you, you have to allow that, such as if you're running um, some firewall, um, virtual firewall, um, virtual machines require that setting to be enabled. Um, so rather than have it continuously tell you that you're breaching that security recommendation, you can just say ignore uh, ignore this set of these hosts. So yeah, there is a way to um, put a filter in place on any recommendation. Yeah, excellent. So let me just jump out of here and hopefully my VPN back to the office is still working and we should be able to log into the product. So maybe I'll just start with, uh, in terms of actually getting the, uh, the, the, the Runecast product up and running. So from the Runecast website, um, it's a very simple thing to do to, to go to the Runecast website and just set, set yourself up with an account there. Um, apologies for the snowness. This is probably due to me going back through my VPN to the office and then back out to the internet. So from runecast.biz, uh, this is the Runecast website. So from here you just need to go to the free trial and uh, set yourself up with a, an account with Runecast. Once you've done that, you will be able to download the IPA for Runecast. Um, to download that uh, OVA and deploy that as a virtual machine in your environment. Once you've done that, um, there is just a few basic steps you have to go through to configure the appliance, give it a name, IP address, basic stuff like that. Um, from there, you can get to the web interface, point it at your vCenter server. Um, this is all, of course, explained in the um, guide that's available um, once you're logged in. Actually, let me just do that. Um, so once you deploy the appliance, get it going, point it at your vCenter, do a scan. Within 15 minutes, start to finish, you'll have your first set of results. So you will have your uh, 
um, it will do a scan, um, it will compare that against the KB articles, the best practice guides and the security hardening guides um, and give you um, your first results within 15 minutes. So very easy to do, it's uh, free to, to get the 30 day trial to give it a go. Um, so I definitely recommend that you do that. So once you're logged in here, you would just download the OVA, OVA file there, like I said, get it up and running, and within 10 minutes you will have yourself up and running with a Roomcast appliance like this. So let me just log in here. So, sorry, I should have pointed out there, that you can either, um, Roomcast comes with a predefined local user account um, and password, um, which you can change of course. Um, also recently we've just, uh, the Roomcast guys have enabled AD um, integration. So you can integrate this with your Active Directory, um, have a security group in AD which you place your Roomcast admins into, then uh, they can log into Roomcast using their AD credentials. So of course that's something uh, we definitely recommend. And does it support roles-based role access as well? So say you only want auditors just to be able to see a dashboard but not make changes, that sort of thing? Not as of yet. That is uh, definitely in the pipeline. That's something we've uh, yeah we've uh, definitely suggested, and, and that that has been worked on. At the moment, it's just a, just an admin uh, role is the only one currently available. So once we log into the uh, Roomcast, the first thing we get here is the, the the main kind of dashboard screen. So on here we have uh, hopefully you can see my mouse cursor and me hovering above uh, some of these. Um, buttons. So we have here in the top left a uh, basic uh, high level view of how many issues we have. So all the issues are categorized into critical, major, medium and minor. And here we just show the, the kind of top uh, top issues there. So um, as I said this is just pointing at a uh, lab environment which was uh, built by one of our staff. Um, hence why uh, there's quite a number of issues in it. So this is just somewhere where we muck around. So Luckily for us, uh, there's, there's plenty of issues to look at. So we have the six critical, 25 major, 17 medium showing up there, and by clicking on any of these, we'll drill down into those six critical issues. So we can see there we've got the six criticals. Go back to the dashboard, uh, click on major, there we get our 25 major issues shown down there. So let's just scroll through those and see all of them. So that's a very quick and easy way of coming into the dashboard. We can see straight away, oh yeah, we have six critical issues going straight into those. We know we can see where those issues are and giving us the, the you know, a quick way to go and, and look at those issues and, and resolve them. We'll delve a bit deeper into those in a minute. Uh, next item there is just the uh, just to show you uh, overall how many how many items in your environment have have got issues. So when we talk about configuration items, we're talking about vSense server, vSphere hosts, virtual machines. You know, any, any item that we pick up and scan in the environment um, is a configuration item. So it gives you a quick guide there of <coughs> a percentage show of what has issues and what doesn't. In the top right, we have our top 10. So we have a uh, quick view there of here's the top 10 items with the highest number of issues. So as we can see here, uh, three hosts, uh, three lab hosts are uh, number one, two, and three. And got quite a few issues of those. And then everything else below that are virtual machines. So we can just quickly, again, we can we can click on one of these uh, and just see the issues that apply to that one machine. So we see it's got a mixture of critical, major, and medium. Yeah, probably some, uh, sorry, low, so the lowest one. Um, low rating issues. Uh, scrolling down the screen a bit here, we have a <laughs> some other summaries here, so uh, number of KBR issues found in logs, so this is, like I said before, we can uh, we can configure the vCenter server and the vSphere host and even the virtual machines 
to send their logs, um, just basically using syslog, to send their logs to the Roomcast appliance, and it will go through and look through those log files and look for issues in them. <coughs> um, we have a KB articles uh, screen here. So this is just showing us a quick overview of all of the KB articles that are currently picked up against our environment. So out of all of the ones that are currently uh, available, um, here's the ones that are actually applicable to our environment. And so you can drill down into each of those and see where they're affecting your environment. Similar kind of thing goes for security compliance. Uh, when we click into this, just shown a bit differently, we have all the uh, security hardening uh, settings that we're basically looking for. Um, what kind of category they are, whether they're major, medium, low, and whether they are a pass or a fail. So quick and easy way to see which ones we're adhering to and those that they're not. And the last button on the right there is just the uh, best practice, so similar kind of thing, basically. So here's the uh, best practice recommendations that we're checking against, um, their category, uh, major, medium, low, and whether we pass or fail on them. And if we fail, uh, for example here, we can see how many issues, how many items we're failing on for each of those, um, each of those best practices. Excuse me. And down at the bottom, we just have a, uh, a quick overview here of um, here's the inventory objects that we're actually looking at. So we have an overview of the clusters, data centers, etc. You can see there. Here's all the different items that we're checking and scanning against, from hosts to switches to uh, networks to the apps, virtual machines. So uh, it's just an overview of how much we're actually scanning against. And in the bottom right, we have a, a kind of a, a, a overview of the Roomcast appliance itself. Uh, just show you here, it's running, how often, <clears throat> so how often do we do a scan? So we can configure how often do we want to rescan the environment. Um, so on this one, for example, we've configured it to run every 24 hours. So just once a day, we do a scan. That's configurable. Uh, delve into that in a bit. It's, yeah, it can be hours or it can be days, weeks. It's, it's up to you how often you want to scan your environment. Um, I think uh, every day should be probably pretty much bare minimum. Um, you want to know what's changed and if something has changed that has um, affected your environment or especially around the security side of it. Um, just an overview there of the security articles, best practice articles, KV articles uh, that are all in scope in your environment. Uh, shows you there the vCenter server that we're connected to and the user that we're using. And then on the right hand side, yeah, just you know, scan times, um, total number of checks performed. Uh, yeah, just a number of different uh, things there. Okay, so if we go over to the left hand side, we have a, uh, a, a menu there which um, allows us to kind of delve, another way of delving into the different, different parts of Roomcast that we have. So underneath the dashboard we have the inventory. So from the inventory we can look at the different parts of the environment and as we go over each part, uh, you can see it pops up a menu to show us all the, all the configuration items that are part of uh, the inventory that we're looking at. So if we go, go to the networks, that's where we see all the network port groups and switches um, that exist in our environment. Storage, we see all the data stores, VMs, very self-explanatory, we see all the VMs. Oops, excuse me. And compute, we see the hosts. So we see the vCenter, the data center, the clusters, and the hosts underneath them. And as you can see there, for each one that we go to, we also have the number of issues uh, shown up on the right-hand side of each one, uh, the number of issues that apply to uh, each part of the environment. If we... Uh, 
sorry. If we uh, if we click down into any one of these, uh, that basically just takes us down into that configuration item and shows us just the uh, the issues that apply to that item. So it's a very quick and easy way of saying if you want to look at a particular VM or a particular host, uh, show me all the issues that exist with that host or VM. If we go to the issue list, uh, this will basically give us um, a show us all of the issues that exist in an environment. So we can see here um, basically all of the issues that uh, are currently being picked up by Marinecast um, as a, a single list of everything that uh, everything that's been picked up. So from here, or from many of the other ways of getting to here, you can see that when you uh, all you have to do is on a issue, it's basically just click on any part of that bar um, for it to expand out. Now we can see with this issue here as an example, um, going from the columns up the top, um, it's a critical issue, so it's uh, the highest ranking. Its source is KB, so it's it's a knowledge base article that um, this has come from. It applies to compute, so this is going to be a, a host issue, um, and it affects the availability, uh, and it's currently being picked up against 12 different objects. So you can see here, uh, just as an example, um, this is uh, basically here's the KB article that um, is actually uh, this issue is looking for in your environment. Um, basically, it's, this is taken straight from VMware's KB um, KB article database. So we can click on the little box there to send it into a slightly larger screen to make it easier to read. Um, so we have here, as you, I'm sure you'll see, is kind of similar look and feel to the VMware KB articles. Um, we have the symptoms of it and the resolution for it, or workaround if that's the case. So there's a that's an example of a KB article. If you scroll a bit down here, um, as you can see, here's one where it's a best practice uh, uh, setting: uh, remote display max connection not set to one, um, and where that has come from. So it's actually from a hardening guide, but it's it's a best practice. Um, Similar to this one here, uh, TSM, so tick support mode, uh, not having a timeout set. So this is just where best, best practice would be to have a timeout set on uh, something like that, tick support mode. And um, Broomcast has picked up. Um, if you click on the findings tab here, um, it's going to tell you where it's picked up that issue. So we can see here on all three hosts uh, are affected by this. And then the right hand side here, we can see that this is the basically the parameters that we're looking for. Um, so ESXi show interactive timeout status. Uh, it's currently set to disabled. So that basically means we have no TSM timeout set. So best practice would say we should go and set a timeout on something like that. And once we have done that uh, and perform another rescan, um, or the next schedule rescan happens, this issue would disappear. Now, as I said earlier, uh, something like that um, could be required in your environment. So if that is the case, on the right hand side here, we have a ignore button. So if we know that a certain issue or best practice or recommended security setting um, can't be adhered to environment, we can very easily from here uh, click on the ignore button. And basically we just then set up a filter to say that we're just going to ignore that issue from now on. So we can give it a name like TSM uh, timeout. We can just say we just want to apply that everywhere to our environment. I'll get the spell it right. Uh, put in a more detailed description here. You may want to say why you um, 
are not changing the ceiling or have it set the way it is. And then click on the filter button. So once we do that, um, that basically will disappear. So as we can see now, or rather we can't see now, that has now disappeared. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it was. I'm sure it was around here on the screen before. Uh, and now it has disappeared. And you can drill so that down. See, um, Sorry. Um, Sorry? That filter, you can drill that down by the looks of it to per VM. Yeah, you can go that granular. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, so if I were to, do, if it were to be a VM one like uh, something like that, um, so we can uh, applies two VMs. But uh, yeah, when you when you go and set a filter, uh, you don't have to apply it globally. So if it were a VM setting, we may just say that this we just want to apply to that one virtual machine. So we would give it a name, whatever it was, and in the description say we are ignoring this on the lab jump host because we need to have it switched on. So yeah, that's that's a good example there of um, when to use the filters properly. So if we just go through some of the other stuff here, uh, in a similar way that we can drill down and look at the, the total issues list, or we can look at the issues for a singular <coughs> configuration item, we can also uh, look at all of the KB articles, or just look at the best practice guides, or just look at the security hardening guides. Uh, sorry, I did show you some of that before. So. Um, uh, yeah, so that's how we can just look at the different areas and, and concentrate. So we, once you get this in, you see the number of issues that you will have in your environment. Uh, you may want to just pick off one thing at a time and start with the security and start looking at all the security hardening um, suggestions. Um, yeah, many, many different ways to do it. Uh, on the left-hand side, the other thing we have down below is the log analysis. So we have here... Um, this is basically where we would see if we were finding issues in our logs against KB articles, uh, we would see these issues showing up here. So there's nothing actually in there at the moment. But what we can do is if we click on the verbose dashboards, we can see here um, basically where all the log files are coming through. And basically we have some, some issues that you may want to, you know, again, kind of apply a filter to, to show um, against certain kind of things like uh, looking for errors through the log files. So uh, this may not correspond back to a KB article, but we may be seeing errors we want to have a look at. So it's kind of a quick and easy way to, to come and look back, uh, have a look for errors. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of information in it being pumped into here from our environment because most of it's uh, powered off in terms of virtual machines. Um, so it's not too busy, really, so there's not too much going on uh, in terms of logging. <coughs> uh, if we click on the status button here on the left-hand side, um, just going to give us a quick status of basically uh, the stats from the Runecast appliance itself, so um, IP address, host name, how much space we're using up, CPU memory usage, disk usage, yeah, simple stuff like that. Um, we also have here, uh, in terms of the log analysis, this is where we can come to configure uh, the syslog. So what we can do with Runecast, and again, this is explained in the user guide very, very clearly, um, the once we set up Greencast and point it at vCenter, of course, we have to give it credentials. And depending on what level of credentials we give uh, the Greencast user account, uh, one of the neat things that it can do, given it has the right uh, security permissions, is uh, once you've deployed it and pointed it at your vCenter server, if you want to come and enable the logging side of it, all that we need to do is uh, come into here and ask, basically, tell Runecast to go and configure syslog on the hosts. So from here, if the hosts were not configured, uh, we would I'll show you here on the VMs, because our VMs are not currently configured. So from here, we can just come in and tell, basically tell Runecast to go and turn on uh, or enable syslog 
from any or all of the VMs, and the same applies to the hosts, um, to enable logging on the hosts or and start sending them to the Runecast server. Or if they are already on, as they are here, we can come in and turn it off. So turning off, uh, as it says when you hover over it, this will go and unconfigure. So we can, if we decide we don't want to do this, it's very easy to come in and unconfigure the syslog settings. Now I think this is a great, great tool. Um, it's just such an easy way to get it up and running. Uh, of course, may not apply to everyone, may not be allowed to give the Runecast user account those uh, permissions to do that. And if that is the case, we just click on the button here uh, and it's going to give us instructions on how we do that manually. So either, um, uh, yeah, just to how, how to go through the settings there and to configure it manually. Or if we click on the scripted button, we can download a PowerCLI script uh, which you can then use to um, configure syslog on your hosts or on your virtual machines. So same applies there. All the settings that you need to change or download a PowerCLI script for that. Uh, if we just show you through some of the, uh, the other buttons just that we have here up at the top. Um, so the, the, the main button up here is the Analyze Now button. So if we wanted to go and do an immediate scan in the environment, we basically just go and click that button. So that will go off from the appliance. It will go and speak to vCenter, speak to the host, speak to the VMs, um, go and scan the environment, as you can see there. comes back pretty quick um, with, uh, with those results. So if something had changed in the environment, that would now show up in here. Um, You'll see that uh, the alert button there had a 9 on it before, so that we can see just by looking through here that um, the 9 starting a few seconds ago, we kicked off the collection from Peace Center. Uh, so you can see there it completed its uh, collection, did an analysis, filtered the results, removed old results, and complete all within a matter of seconds. So to me, that is that is just Goal, how quickly and easily it, it does that um, is really a superb. If we go into the settings, uh, so we can see in here, this is just basically where we configure our vCenter, so how we connect back to the vCenter server. So IP address, host name, of course, please use few fully qualified domain names. Uh, this is just our lab environment, so we just use IP addresses. Uh, credentials that we use, don't use root, don't do what we do. Um, scheduling, so this is where, sort of the, where we uh, configure Runecast uh, how often we want to scan the environment. So like I said before, we can scan every hour up to 12 hours, or we can go every day, or six days, or every week. Or we can turn off automatic scheduling, so we do not have to have it automatically uh, re-scanning your environment. Um, can't see why you want to do that, but you can. So yeah. Definitely have it uh, have it going, have it uh, running at least once a day, in my recommendation. Alerting, so we can enable Runecast to send out a email alerts. So uh, all we do have to do here is provide it with a SMTP host, uh, from address, um, port, and where we're going to send the emails to, and enable it or disable it. And what this will do is every time it runs a analyze, it will send out a report to the email recipient or be that a distribution list or a individual and give you a nice, uh, a very nice report of, of your environment. So again, if you don't want to have to come and look at this every day, which you shouldn't have to, uh, get the email reports, look at the email reports from there, dive into Runecast, have a look at the issues. Uh, decide what you want to do with them. Uh, log analysis, so as you can imagine, sending all of your syslog stuff to the Runecast Alliance can generate a fair amount of data. So we can come in here and say how much do we want to keep. So we can uh, have it prune out uh, all the entries, either by days or once we get to a certain amount of space. So if you, whichever way you want to do it, depends how long you have to keep that data for or how long you want to be able to go back for. 
or if you are purely space restricted, um, you can just set a cap on how much space you get, then of course the number of days will vary. Does that work as a whichever one comes first? Uh, yes, yeah, correct. Uh, user profile, so here as I said before, we either have a, by default we just have the local user account, um, which we can just change the password on that if we want to. We can also integrate with Active Directory. <coughs> so here's where we specify our AD domain. Uh, we can be a bit more detailed than that in terms of ports and addresses and route, uh, and also the group name. So if we want to change the name of the group, uh, if you have a naming standard for your Active Directory groups, we just change it here to match your group. Um, so, and this this will basically be your runecast admins currently. That's the admin group that's available. If we go to filters, uh, so this is once we've gone through our environment and we've had a look at the issues and decided which ones we need to filter out. This is where once we've filtered them individually, here's where we can see all of those filters in a single list. So this is this is brilliant as well because uh, there's nothing. <laughs> Can be anything worse than going and setting a filter on a particularly important security setting and then forgetting that you've set that filter and then never being told about a potential issue ever again. So we can see here all of the filters that we've set up, um, like this is the one I did earlier. Uh, so we can see here the name of the filter that we've done where it, uh, and where it applies to. So this is where naming your filter is definitely quite important. Um, you can see here where what what part of the tree it applies to, and also which what are we actually filtering out. So you could come in here once you've found a, a few different issues, you can kind of combine those issues together. So if we wanted to combine local TSM with TSM timeout not set, and have that as a just a TSM filter, we can do that. And if we wanted to only apply that on a single host. Simple as that. So now we can, see, you can see how granular you can get with the filters. Um, so yeah, and also quickly turn filters on or off. So we may want to temporarily turn them off or turn them back on. And licensing. So here is where we would come and once we uh, purchased Runecast. Uh, here's where we would come and apply our license. So as I said before, if you sign up for a free trial of Runecast, you will get a 30-day uh, license, which to me is just a no-brainer. Um, <laughs> no one should not be doing that. Um, to download, stick it in, you get 30 days to run Runecast, to play with it, to see all the issues that it can pick up. Um, it will sell itself. It, it, the value you will get back from it in that 30 days. It, there's no filtering of you can only see certain issues or anything like that. It's a full-blown runecast that you can run for 30 days. So I uh, strongly advise people to, to go and uh, sign up on the website, uh, download the OVA, um, have a flick through the easy guide and get it up and running. As I said, 15 minutes from, from where to go and you will have it up and running in your environment and you can start seeing the value that you can get back from, from Runecast um, that quickly. Um, to me, it just sells itself. Once, once you can show this to um, management and show how easy and effective it is and also whether you want to or not, show them how many issues there are in your environment, um, it's it's just gold, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else can we just say about? So yeah, you can from here. Something else I didn't say before. So we can uh, export our results uh, quickly and easily from any of those screens, either as CSV or saving down as a PDF. Uh, let's just do a show you of that. What am I looking for? Uh, somewhere to put it. That's where I was looking for. So if we 
So as you can see, you can quickly, easily export uh, any of those into a PDF file just to show you all the, the issues there. It's good for showing people um, quick and easy way to export information out of the environment. Um, yeah, simple as that really. Um, any other questions out there from anyone? So from what you showed before in the settings, it looks like it's uh, one uh, deployment per vCenter server, is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, you can only point it at a single vCenter instance per deployment. All right. But, uh, but the, the licensing is done per, uh, per CPU, so per host CPU. Uh, so there's no limit, as far as I understand, to how many appliances you deploy. It's just per host CPU and, licenses. And so you, per socket. Uh, excellent. So you've mentioned that the um, a couple of times that you know it will run checks on the VMs. I'm going to assume that that just that's more the the VM settings as per the hypervisor more than what's happening in the guest OS, is that correct? Yeah, right, correct, sorry, yeah, I didn't explicitly say that, but yeah, so we're, we're only scanning outside of the OS, we're not going into the OS of the virtual machines and looking for issues inside Windows and stuff like that, no, 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 no. purely just the VMware level only, so the, the vCenter, the host and the virtual machines in terms of their configuration settings from the VMware environment, correct. All right. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other uh, questions raised other than the ones I've asked. So, um, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up, Stuart? No, I don't think so. Uh, as I said before, the best thing that anyone can do is jump onto the Runecast.biz website, um, go and sign yourself up for a free trial, download the OVA, get it up and running in 15 minutes, and play with it. Just try it. It's it's that easy. It's um, yeah. Give it a go. You you, you won't be uh, fail to be uh, unimpressed. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Stuart. It's an excellent presentation, and yeah, look forward to seeing more of what Ringcast can do. Awesome. Thank you very much, Brent. Uh, thank you, everyone out there, um, for attending this evening. Um, yeah. And if anyone has any further questions, either contact the guys at Ringcast or contact me. Um, just stick it up there again, just so you can see my email address if needed. Click on an email, let me know. Uh, happy to help you out. Any questions whatsoever? All right, so thank you everyone for listening to tonight's V Brown Bag APAC on Marinecast, um, presented by Stuart McEwen from VIFX, and um, I was your host Brett Johnson. So, so yeah, I'll see you guys next time.